What's going on guys, it's Pixelated and today we are looking at a pair of shoes that I'm very excited about. If you're a sneakerhead, you're into Jordans, you should be excited about and we all should be excited about together because, well, here's the deal. The shoes are a piece of the puzzle that is the history of Michael Jordan and the shattered backboard. Keeping it nice, clean and short, pretty much Michael Jordan shattered a backboard when he dunked in a Team USA exhibition game. He was wearing a navy and orange jersey which was the inspiration for this colorway and several colorways before it and over time they've come to be super coveted by sneakerheads and basketball fans alike. This pair right here is the fourth iteration of the Jordan 1 shattered backboard. Look at previous versions, the first and most coveted one is the OG shattered backboard, then we have the reverse shattered backboard backboard which released afterwards, it is an all orange version, and then ending off the list with the satin shattered backboard or SSBB, I totally made that up, no one calls it that, which was a women's only release. Finally to complete that run we have the shattered backboard 3.0. You might be wondering why is it a 3.0 and not 4.0 since three pairs released before it. Well mainly because the third pair is pretty much the same colorway as the OG but with different materials. Consider it a spin-off like the film Hobbs and Shaw isn't a direct sequel or continuation of the main Fast and Furious storyline but it's still in the same universe. You get it. Before we get to the rest of the review feel free to follow me on Instagram at pixelated that's at p-i-c-s-o-l-e-a-t-e-d for fire sneaker content and to keep up to date with what I'm up to. Also if you want this shoe I'd recommend getting it now as the prices are at an attainable point. I've left a link in the description where you can get these. Don't wait until the prices go up. I repeat do not wait until the prices rise in the future because they will and these will become too expensive to justify. So get your pair now while the prices are still within reach. Now when images first leaked on the internet the Shattered Backboard 3.0 was met with a lot of hate and criticism for its look and choice of material. The most preposterous insults were being thrown around at its soulless sneaker body. People said the shoe looks similar to chicken skin as if somebody dropped grease on the shoe and some went so far as to say it looked like Leatherface or Jason's real face under the mask. Now that is insulting. I get it's a new material texture, nobody expected the whole patent, shiny leather situation, let alone with some aged wrinkles all over the place. And if I'm being honest with you, the first pics had me hating the shoe too. But it turns out it was mainly because those photos were just shoddy photos to begin with. They were taken under terrible lighting and highlighted the potentially disturbing looking texture of the entire shoe. However, after the first set of pics, any other pics that came out afterwards made me like the shoes more. Not because they grew on me, but because they were just a more accurate representation of what the shoe looked like versus the initial leaked photos. However, it's not easy to get over a first impression and a lot of people stuck with that first impression because of those photos. We'll get into that later, but first let's quickly go over the materials. The entire upper of the shoe is made of this wrinkled patent leather, you know, the controversial one we just talked about. The side panels are made of the black wrinkled patent leather along with the eyelets and the toe cap of the shoe as well as the heel collar. Before we go any further I just want to express just how soft the heel collar and toe cap leather is on this shoe. If you've ever felt patent leather you know it's not the softest material. In fact if anything it's the complete opposite. It's almost insanely stiff for something people like having on their shoes. So the fact that it's soft leads me to believe that this shoe might actually become the standard for patent leather quality regardless of the leather face texture of the shoe. Which might be off putting to some but it just goes to show that Nike even under harsh criticism was thinking 10 steps ahead. Then we have this vibrant orange wrinkled leather forming the rest of the shoe such as the swoosh, the heel counter, the ankle collar wings area with the Jordan wings logo embossed into it and finally the orange leather on the toe box which is surprisingly soft. The tongue is padded and made of nylon as most Nike Air Jordan 1 tongues are with a Nike Air logo on the tongue tag. The shoe comes with black flat laces and a pair of alternate orange laces. The inside of the shoe is made of a black fabric and this is what really perplexes me about the shoe. Why in the world does it not have the iconic shattered backboard insole? You know, the one with the backboard shattering as the name states that all the other shattered backboard sneakers have. It makes me wonder if this is even an official shattered backboard release or if retailers are just pushing the shattered backboard 3.0 moniker to make sure this sells out. Which it obviously did. Finally we have the last piece of the shattered backboard, it's this off-white vintage looking pale midsole and outsole, it's unique to this pair only, it's a fresh take, it even has a more rubbery feel to it than previous shattered backboard midsoles and just any Jordan 1 midsoles and to be honest I probably would not have cared for the shoe or at least I would have liked it substantially less if it didn't have this mid and outsole and it had the traditional shattered backboard midsole with the orange outsole. Something about this aged looking midsole just works better with this glossy wrinkly leather finish of the shoe. As for sizing I recommend going with the same sizing you do in any Jordan 1. I usually go half a size down for my true size in Jordan 1s. I'm a size 10 and I typically wear 9.5. However, there are people out there that go true to size and you could be one of those people. So for safety, I'd say go true to size. But if you really want to make sure of your size, you want to get what really fits. 
go to any Foot Locker and try out a pair of Jordan 1s to make sure what size you are. Generally, true to size and half a size down are a safe bet though. When it comes to comfort, even with all the visual upgrades or downgrades for some people, there are no comfort upgrades in the shoe and there most likely won't be for a long time, especially not for these hype pairs that are influenced by legacy colorways such as the OG Shattered Backboard. In other words, don't expect anything special. Jordan 1s are relatively comfortable for a pair of shoes designed in the mid 80s, but if you're looking for bleeding edge comfort tech, you're not going to get it here. With this new chicken grease upper, there's also noticeably less give than what the original Shattered Backboard would give you. If you know about the original Shattered Backboard leather, it has become the standard when it comes to the quality of leather on a shoe. It's probably the softest leather on any Jordan one it's almost legendary at this point and for most shoes in general whenever a shoe comes out where the material quality of the shoes is relatively high it is almost immediately compared and benchmarked to the leather on the og shattered backboard in this case the shattered backboard 3.0 even though it is the softest patent leather i've ever felt it is still in fact patent leather and there isn't much give on the side panels of the shoe so it's almost unfair to compare these to the og shattered backboard but that also contributes to how the shoe feels on foot it definitely doesn't feel as soft and giving as most regular leather based jordan ones and if you've owned or even tried on any patent leather Jordan 1s like the Gold Toes or recent UNC 1s that were patent leather, you know exactly what I'm talking about. However, let's remember that this patent leather is softer than all of those patent leathers, so it's actually on the top list for that. Anyways, be mindful of that. Regardless, for a pair of classic shoes, you get the basic level of comfort you desire. Oh, and another thing, by all means, you're allowed to do whatever you want with a shoe once you've bought it, but please, for God's sake, do not mat the shoe. You're wasting the integrity of the shoe, and if you don't like it, simply don't buy it. Let the price go down for people who actually want it, and I'll tell you why I say that. It's partly because of the lack of the iconic Shattered Backboard insole. That key detail leads me to believe that this was not an official Shattered Backboard release, although it was marked as one by literally every retailer other than Nike themselves. Themselves. And I can say with 100% certainty that they will release a version that is the same shoe that will be a matte version. Let me put an emphasis on this. I am 100% certain. This is not insider info, this is just logic. And if you don't think they will do it, you are absolutely wrong. Trust me on this. The demand is there. Nike is not silly. They want to sell as much of whatever they can while still keeping the demand up. So once again, if you want to matte it, just be patient and wait for when they drop the non-shiny version of the shoe. Also know that it is possible that it won't happen for at least a year or two, maybe even longer, but it will happen. Overall, I'm honestly surprised by the Shattered Backboard 3.0. This was not something I expected, but in many regards, I think I like this shoe better than the OG Shattered Backboard. And I know what you're thinking, that's blasphemous. And to be honest, it kind of is, but hear me out. For one, this is actually my first patent leather Jordan 1. I've never been a fan of patent leather, but the way they did it on this shoe was so unique. And the fact that they made it soft on the orange portions and certain black portions was what really won me. On top of that, the orange is more vibrant than it is on the OG, which makes for a more bright, colorful contrast and allows the shoe to pop. And to top it off, the vintage midsole and the orange laces make this shoe stand out like no tomorrow. The only thing that sweetens the deal for me even more is that the price for these right now is relatively low on the aftermarket. In fact, I bought my pair for resale. Like I said before, I've left a link in the description where you can get them. I would 100% recommend getting them now because there is absolutely no question these will go up in the future and you don't want to wait until the price is too high and unattainable. Beat the system by getting them now. Those are my thoughts on this release. The Shattered Backboard 3.0 was a mixed bag with a lot of people dissing them and Jordan Brand for deciding to design them the way they did. But there were many who saw the uniqueness of this shoe and bought into it the same way I did. What did you guys think about this shoe? Did Jordan Brand do the right thing by trying to break another barrier with this release? Or did they jump the gun and do too much? Let me know in the comments. Catch you later. Pixelated is shattering zero backboards.